Hi there, everybody, and welcome back to Revit Intermediate. Now, what you're looking at right now you may not have seen before, but it's just a basic residential house that we designed during the Revit Essentials course. What I want to do today is start showing you how you can tag and annotate different aspects of your project. How to apply tags to the doors and the windows, and really start fleshing out your overall project. So, if you haven't already created a house yet, go back through the Revit Essentials course and go ahead and create your own house that we can then work with. Now that's not to say that the Revit Intermediate course is going to use this house for all its different lessons, but many of them will, and it'll be a good starting point for you. So let's go to the first floor floor plan. You'll see here that we have a living room, a basement, dining room, kitchen, study hall, kids room, bathroom, Pretty standard spaces, all labeled with room tags. We also have elevation markers, which allow you to annotate annotations. We also have dimension lines, which show you the distance between different objects. But what about the windows and doors and other types of objects? Well, what you can do is go up to the Annotate tab, and you can see a whole list of different types of tags under the Tag panel. Now, to do that, you might use a space tag or a room tag. A room tag, all you have to do is click the room tag icon, and it will automatically read the room. Now, be aware that to do that, you have to have already created the room, meaning that you have to have placed a room under the architecture tab. Now, when you define a room that way, you can also, at the same time, annotate the room by providing the room tag under the same panel. Now if we go back to the annotate panel, we can have door tags, we can have window tags, you may even have furniture tags. In order to tag elements of a single type, you can click the tag by category icon. If you then click on a particular element though, you might be notified that that element doesn't already have a built-in tag. If you click yes here, you'll be brought to the load family window, which lets you load in the tags for given families. Note in this case that you can only load in certain annotations. So if we go to the annotations folder and look for a furniture tag, we might not see one. So be aware at this juncture that your annotation tags are going to be limited by the built-in types. Later in the course though, we'll show you how to add in new types. But for right now, I'm just going to cancel out, and we're going to stick with one that's easy. So I've got my window tag right now. So I'm just going to go around clicking on each window and tagging them. Now this might be a little bit tedious, because you might want to get them set all at once. Well, one thing that you can do is you can modify certain settings. For instance, you can choose the orientation of your tags, whether you want them to be horizontal or vertical. You can also choose whether or not you want a leader. So if you uncheck that and place a tag, you'll see there's no line. If you do want a leader, you can choose whether it's an attached end or a free end, and you can also choose the distance of that leader. So if we change that to an eighth of an inch, you'll see the tag's leader is much shorter. Now I'm going to hit Control Z a couple times to undo, but you can also do that from the quick access toolbar at the top of the screen, and that'll undo all those tags. Now if we wanted to tag all the windows at once, we could go to the Annotate tab and choose the Tag All option. When you choose that option, several different categories will appear automatically. Uh, you can see at the top there's door tags, room tags, you can see further down there's view titles, wall tags, window tags, several different types of tags. And you can also choose to include elements from linked files. So linked files are something we'll get into a little bit later in this course, and then also in the advanced course. Uh, they have a little bit of a different purpose. But like I said, we'll go over that a little bit later. For now, let's select window tags, and we want to include a leader. We'll make the leader length a quarter of an inch, the tag orientation horizontal, and then click apply. You'll see now that all of the windows are tagged automatically. This is really nice, so you don't run the risk of missing a window or mistagging one. One important thing to note with tagging is that while windows have the same ID number, doors do not. 
So if I tag one door by category, and then tag the other, you'll see they have two different identification numbers. Because there's two different doors, they have different IDs when tagging. Now if you wanted it to be tagged the same, you could always edit the family and create a custom component to make it a double door. Or you could import a door, and then they would have the same tag. So let's demonstrate this. We'll go to the Architecture tab and choose Door, or you can use the keyboard shortcut DR. And now we'll go to the Load Family option, and we will load in a glass double door. And we're just going to stick it in the middle of the room, just for example. Now when we go back to Annotation, when we choose Tag by Category this time, the two individual doors still have different numbers, but the imported double door only gets one. Another important note about the tags, if the numbers look too random for you, you can always click into the tag and manually renumber it to anything you want. You can also renumber the tag by clicking on the item itself, and then from the properties window, scrolling down to mark. It's part of the identity data for every item, and if you change the mark in the properties window, then it will also change it in your plan. So this is just another example of what we've talked about with everything in Revit being in sync. And this extends throughout all of Revit's different functionalities. When we get into schedules, you'll see that the marks also carry over there. Okay, now I want to show you some errors that might occur so you're aware of them and can deal with them. So if I give the left door a tag of 10, when we already have a door that has a tag of 10, you'll get a warning message telling you that elements have duplicate mark values. Note that Revit only notifies you of that. It doesn't actually stop you from having duplicate mark values. So you could have two totally different elements that have the same mark value, but this usually isn't recommended because it'll create problems when you try to add hardware and other components into the different elements. You can also tag all the doors at once. Click Tag All, select Door Tags, choose a leader if you want, and then click Apply. Now as you look through your project, you'll see that every door has been tagged, and you can always change the mark by going into the Properties window and changing it there, or by clicking into the tag and changing it from the plan. And again, because of the interconnectedness of Revit, one of the really nice things, especially with series of similar objects like Windows, is that if you change the mark value of one element, all similar elements will have their mark value changed as well. So if we change the tag on one window to 1, you'll have a notice that will appear saying that you're changing a type parameter, which we'll cover type parameters and instant parameters later in the course. And then it will also tell you you're going to change many elements. If you click yes, then you'll see that the tags for all the windows of the same type have changed to 01. Again, and I know I keep mentioning it, but it's one of the best things about Revit. It tracks these items and handles these changes for you, so you don't have to get bogged down in little details. By a similar token, there's a tread number option if you ever need to count the number of stairs in a staircase. So if you click on your staircase on the actual tread, it will give you the tread or riser number. Additionally, you can select the riser number itself, and once you've selected the number, you can go into the Properties window and choose whether you want to tag the stair by riser or by tread. And so because the needs of your project and what's expected of you are going to change over time, this is nice because whatever changes you make are automatically applied and reconciled by Revit. And another thing to be aware of is that even though we're doing everything in the floor plan view, you can also tag your project in elevation view or in section view. So actually, let's go to one of the section views. Now if we choose room tag, you'll see the blue room indicator appear. And if we mouse over it, the rooms that we already named in our project will carry over their name from the floor plan. And any changes that we make here, for instance, if we change the room tag number of the basement to 20, then when we go back to the floor plan, it's also applied there. So as long as you are working in the same model, whether you're in floor plan, elevation, section, all the data is going to transfer across the entire project. Alright, that's it for tags. I will see you in the next lesson.